Hey, this is Josh from Lead Dev, where our goal is to explain programming questions as simple and concise as we can. Today, we'll be talking about the LeetCode Easy Question Add Strings. And while it is an easy question, I thought there were some good applicable uses for it, so that's why we're talking about this today. Another big reason is if you look at LeetCode, Facebook apparently is a big fan of this question. So if you're that Facebook is your dream company, then definitely consider looking at this problem. Here's the problem statement. We're given two non-negative integers, num1 and num2, which are represented as strings, which you can see on our whiteboard over here. And we want to return the sum of num1 and num2, specifically in the form of a string. So we have some conditions. The length of both numbers is less than 5,100. Both num1 and num2 are only digits from 0 and 9. Both numbers does not contain any leading zeros, which means something like 0, 1, 1, which is invalid. And we cannot use any libraries to convert our inputs to an integer directly. A quick example here is we have the string 15, and we added up the string 31. Our expected output would be the string 46, because 15 plus 31 is 46. To solve this problem, we can just do simple addition. If, for example, if we're adding 95 with 5, we add the 5s together, we get 10, add carry over the 1, 1 plus 9 is also 10, carry another 1, and we get our answer 100. Now, this would be simple if we had numbers. Unfortunately, we're given strings, so it's a little bit more complicated. But we can solve this problem in roughly five general steps. The first step is to start from the ones place of our number at the end of the string, and then add extract the value, and I'll show you a cool trick on how we can do that in the live coding section. And then with the number that we have, we'll just add them together with any carryovers that we have to calculate our sum. So in this instance, that's 10. Now, with our sum, we need to calculate two things. We need to calculate our carryover, which we can use for the next iteration when we compare numbers in the tens place. And we also need the digit that will append to our string to show our answer. So in the first iteration, when we're comparing numbers in the ones place, we'll have a carryover of one, and we'll have a digit of zero that will show, which is this value right here. As we continue going through this, things get a little bit more interesting on iteration number two, where we compare nine with nothing. I added empty space to help with the spacing, but the spacing doesn't actually exist. I'll show you a cool trick in the live coding section to handle situations like this. But in this instance, we just assume zero. So nine plus one plus zero is 10. And then we'll just continue doing this and see that we have zero. And then we found we have one le number left and we finish our 10th place and we enter the hundredth place where we have no value. So we just append one into our answer. You'll notice here that this is actually the opposite of what our answer is. So what we need to do at the very end is we need to reverse our string to give 100. So this is the general algorithm to solve this problem. Before we go to the live coding section, let's talk about the runtime. So the runtime of this algorithm is O of N plus M, which is basically linear time because we're, li because we're iterating through all the indexes of our first string and our second string. The space of our algorithm would be O to the max of N plus M because our size of our sum would be the biggest digit that we have, potentially plus one in the case that we overflow like in this example. Now that we have this, let's get started on the live coding section. In this problem, we're going to continue using 95 and 5 as our input examples. So like what we always do, let's first define our starting variables. So the first thing we did was we defined carry, which is our carryover. Pretty self-explanatory. We start at 0 because we don't have any carryovers yet. Next, we define two variables, length 1 and length 2. These values are set to be the length of the respective numbers, minus 1, because we want to get the index of the starting 1's place. 
So for example, so in length one, we have 95, which has a length of two. So the ones place is located at index one. And for num two, it only, since it only has length one, the ones place is located at index zero. And then finally, we're going to use a string builder, which is something that Java uses to add values into a string. However, in other languages that might not have a string builder, we could have settled for an array of characters, for example. So now that we have defined our characters, what we want to do is we want to iterate through all the digits and then add them together like what we do in a normal addition equation. And we want to start from the back, which is why we are using these length values. We want to continue doing this until both our length reaches less than zero, because that means we have reached the end of both of our digits. So in our first instance of our iteration, what we need to do is we need to extract the numbers in our ones place. Remember earlier when I talked about if we were in a situation where, for example, our length is actually at negative one here, and there is no tens place for our number five. Well, for this situation, what we would do in a normal mathematical equation is we would just substitute that value for zero. So we would do the exact same logic here. If our length is less than zero, we would use the value zero. Otherwise, we would extract the value at that specific index. And I'll show you how we do that. So this is only a, this is a Java specific solution. So there might be different ways in different languages. However, in Java, if you want to get the character at a specific index, you call the char at function. And that would return a char of that specific number. So in this instance, we have the char five. Now, that unfortunately doesn't map to anything, but chars can actually be converted in integers, specifically their ASCII values. A cool trick to be able to get an actual integer is we would just we would just subtract the char value five with the char value zero. Now both of these are mapped to a specific ASCII value. When I while I don't know the exact numbers, but I can give you an example. So let's say five would be mapped to you know, fifty, and zero as a result would be mapped to forty-five. So we would subtract fifty with forty-five, and we would get five. It doesn't really matter what values that these chars represent as long as their mapping are actually five digits apart, which they are. So what we did here is we say, let's take the character at that specific index that we're looking at, which is five. And then we subtract that with whatever the ASCII value is at zero. And that will give us the integer five. So now that we've extracted both numbers, we can calculate our sum. And then now in the whiteboard, we can calculate a sum, which I forgot to put in. So let's add that back in. So five plus five gives us our sum of 10. Now we just need to calculate the number that we'll be using in our carryover. The number we're showing is just the mod of our sum. So 10 mod 10 is zero. So our num is zero. And then our carryover is the sum divided by 10, which will give us one. So this will be replaced with one. And then finally, we just add the value into our string builder and then decrement our length so we can move to the tens place. So the first thing we do here is we add our num in, so we add zero. So we add zero and then we decrement our length values so we can move to the tens place. So this will give us zero and negative one. And we move our arrows to represent where we are. Now we repeat our while loop again because we still have one number that is still greater than or equal to zero. So our, for our first value a, because our length is still zero, we can, get, we can extract the value, which is nine. So we have nine. But what's interesting now is B. B is negative one, so it is less than zero. As a result, we would use zero. And that makes sense because 
five doesn't have any numbers in the tenths place. So in a normal addition problem, we would just put we would just substitute that with zero. So our sum now would be nine plus our carryover, which is one, which would also give us ten. Now, once again, we do the same thing. We calculate a carryover, which is one, our num is zero, and then we append that in. So our string builder now is at zero, zero. Remember, these are strings that we're appending, not numbers. And then we decrement our length again. Length one is now negative one. Length two is now negative two. Now, because they're both negatives and less than zero, we exit our while loop. And then at this point, if we have any carryover, we just need to append the one. So in this instance, it is, so we just add one. And then now we have our complete answer. And all we need to do is reverse it. Luckily, our string builder has a helpful function that does that for us, so we don't have to implement it. And then we just return that value. And that is how you would solve this problem. Now let's run the code. Oops, it's not in carry, it's carry, we're ready to find it. Let's try it again. Pull it up, and there we go, we have our answer. While this problem was considered easy, I thought there were two helpful takeaways you can get from this, and that is using the length of the string values, and then if it becomes less than zero, set our number to be zero and we can reuse it that makes a very elegant solution and the other interesting thing was how we did our char conversions where we subtract the chars to get a specific integer that we're looking for now if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below otherwise if you found this video helpful please consider liking and maybe even subscribing for daily updates otherwise i'll see you in the next video and have a nice day